Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome to this very special episode of a regularly scheduled Hostilities. That's right. It is Thursday night, and it is your your boys here in Woman at Ridley Schedule with the returning guest, the returning man himself, the returning T.J. Wilson. What's going on, brother? What's up, guys? I'm out in the wilderness this time. You know, I'm keeping the background each time I'm here. I, I want to keep everybody guessing, so I'm in the wilderness now. It's just like you're hiding. Do you have the 24-7 title? Is that what's going on? Are you hiding, right. protected, protecting that? You never know, man. You never know. You never know. I'm, I'm, I'm smoking out. In case I win that thing, where can I hide that no one can find me? So I haven't won it yet, but I'm looking. I'm I'm thinking ahead. I'm I'm thinking. I'm usually thinking, you know, two or three steps ahead. Ah, that's how you do it, man. That's how you are successful in WWE. Yep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, hey, man, welcome back to the show, man. We really appreciate you hanging out with us tonight, and we can't wait to talk some some WWE wrestling with you, man. Oh, my pleasure. I I, I enjoyed our last talk with you guys, and then I messed up my schedule last week. So you know, it's it's always good to talk with you guys. I enjoy it. No, absolutely. We appreciate you, brother. Let's yeah. get right into it, man. What, what we got first here, Josh? All right. So we'll start with – let's start with NXT because that's hot. Uh, Chuck actually just finished NXT from last night. I'm a slacker. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he goes to bed early. He's getting old. But um, ah. NXT, NXT was really good last night. Um, NXT is probably my favorite show to watch right now. I'm big into – I'm a big Dexter Loomis guy. I love Johnny Gargano. Most of the guys I love are actually feuding with each other, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So we got War Games this week. Is there any match in particular that you are looking for? You're really looking forward to? I mean, I'm super. Um, I work with so many of the women on the main roster that I'm always. And I and I train Natty, so I'm very. Um, I'm always going to have a little bit more vested interest in the the women's matches. So of course I'm interested in the women's war games match. It is looks very interesting to me. Um, I've been, both war games matches and, and war games is always kind of cool because it's, you know, it's like once a year. It's kind of its own thing. So it's it's always interesting to kind of see, you know. And, and what I like about having two is that I I like to see little subtle differences to kind of make the two things different. Absolutely, that makes a lot of sense, man. And like, I'm really excited for for this year too. I watched last year's, and this year's it just seems like they're more pumped for it, more hyped, I guess, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. And the show last night, it was just all all intensity from everybody. Like, oh, yeah, know? yeah, you could tell everybody was going. I mean, not that anybody really pumps the brakes too much in general, but especially in NXT. But I think uh, last night really felt like all you know, like everybody was pretty excited, obviously for for Takeover coming up. No, nope, absolutely, man. Like it was, it was crazy. Like I just loved watching everybody yelling at everybody. Right. <laughs> like, the like, last women's war games I watched, they killed it. And I can't wait to see what they do this time. My yeah, favorite. I remember last time, like Rhea had like a star making performance that whole weekend. Rhea had mm-hmm. a star making performance Friday on SmackDown, Saturday at War Games, and then Sunday at Survivor Series last year. Yeah, that was a great weekend last year. That's probably the match I'm looking most forward to as well. I mean, mm-hmm. Shotzi, Ember, Ripley, Io Shirai added to it last night. Yeah. And Candice, Tony, Dakota. I mean, that's a lot of talent. A <laughs> lot of talent and a lot of, like, uh, I, I obviously, like like you said, a ton of talent, but also so much potential. So much potential. Yeah. Like, uh, they're all very talented right now. What are they going to be in two and three years from now? Yeah, most of them are like very young too. They like are. they they haven't even scratched mm-hmm. close to what their potential is. I mean, that's where Rhea's pretty scary because she's so young. Absolutely. Like, I mean, obviously she's gonna be a, a world heavyweight champion oh, someday, yes. right? Like yes. when, the, when the time comes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. No kidding. Yeah, so um basically what we do each month, um, well, each pay-per-view, I guess. We kind of predict what we think is going to happen, talk about the matches, kind of what we think is going to happen. So uh, we'll just kind of run up the card, kind of get your opinion on stuff, and uh, go from there. Cool. One match that was added last night, Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. So Ciampa's been kind of uh, following Thatcher around, trying to get him to fight him, and Thatcher really hasn't really 
been interested until last night. So it looks like they're going to go one on one. So uh, kind of give us your thoughts on this one. This one feels like it's going to be a very hard hitting physical kind of match. Very physical. That match is going to be very physical. And what, just like you said, what's cool is like, um, to the best of my knowledge, this is the first time these, these two have ever been in the ring with each other. So that gives it a different dynamic where like our imaginations kind of run wild and we kind of envision, you know, probably, you know, all four of us probably have a different kind of vision, probably a lot of similarities, but probably some different visions in our head of what they could do. Just because, like I said, this match to the best of my knowledge has not happened before. So th you don't have like a template to kind of base anything on. Um, def it's definitely going to be hard hitting. It's definitely going to be very physical. Um, you know, you have the, uh, that technical prowess of, of Thatcher and then, you know, Tommaso, he kind of can do a little bit of everything and he's very hard hitting and he's a very good, he's very, he's, you know, good technical wrestler too. So I think uh, he might surprise some people, I think in that aspect. Oh, that'd be really cool, man. Mm -hmm. Who do you got? I got I got Champa only because I just love watching the guy whoop people's asses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, I'd love to see him get more technical. Mm -hmm. Typically, with him, it is hard hitting. It's you know, more like a Triple H like style from back in the day. So yeah. seeing him get technical right. and like do mm -hmm. more things like that could be fun to watch for sure. How about you? I got Tommaso Champa. Always been a fan of him. Um, never really cared for Timothy Stacker that much, but he's starting to grow on me a little bit. But Going all I'm going Thatcher. I nice. think one of his students kind of help him. And I think this feud's one that might build for a little bit. I don't think it's going to be a one and done. I think Thatcher sneaks it and that keeps Ciampa chasing a little bit. What do you yeah, think? I, I, I think Thatcher as well. I think just, I mean, obviously we'll see, but I, I just have a feeling maybe Thatcher uh, and it would take nothing away from Tommaso and all the great things he's accomplished so far. Yeah, I like Thatcher. Um, he's had some matches that are he's very physical. He his matches are just like brute, like hard hitting. You can you can feel it from home. Oh yeah. So that should be. I'm hoping that opens the show. My prediction is that match will open the show. Be fun, That'll yeah. be a way to kick it off. Uh, Cameron Grimes versus Dexter Loomis. So me and Chuck are huge Dexter Loomis fans, but I'll tell you, Cameron Grimes over the last few months has been absolutely amazing. His whole that haunted house match was hilarious. Yeah. Um, I'm taking Dexter, but I'm biased because that's my guy. Tyson, who do you have in this one? Strap match yeah, should be I'm fun. With, I'm with you. I, I have Dexter as well, but I'm I'm impressed with both guys. Um, I've definitely seen o over the last few years. I've seen a lot more of Dexter than I have of Cameron. Um, but uh, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting match. Strap matches are a little bit um, man. <laughs> we talked about the last match being physical. This. These are the types of matches that are about as physical as you can get. I had one in FCW against Offa Jr. And uh, I remember, like, we did a thing where he's on the floor kind of dragging me across the ropes uh, from turnbuckle to turnbuckle. And just the, the strap wasn't super long. So it was, like, dragging my chest across the top rope and, like, burn the hell out of my chest. I had, like, a burn in my chest for, like, a month for, uh, from the rope burn. Uh, at one point, uh, he had the strap around my throat and I was trying to get my wow. hand in, but I slipped and he was like kind of pulling me from here again. He's on the floor and I was in the ring and I like pass out for like a millisecond. So like, I know how physical these strap matches can be. So we talked about the last match being physical. This one's going to be mm -hmm. wild. I, you remember Bray and Daniel Bryan earlier this yeah, year? Yeah, I remember that. One. That was one of the – that was brutal. That look, was Bryan brutal. looked like he was just battered by yeah. the end of that one. <laughs> Those are that. hard. They're very physical. Brutal. <laughs> yeah, that, that, match, that match was – it's so crazy that that was this year. It feels like a long time. It ago. does. It does. It feels like – what was it like? I think 2020 has dragged on for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? remember, remember, when, remember when Tiger King was a thing? <laughs> Unfortunately, that seems sooner than that. Uh, yeah. that it feels like that was four years ago. <laughs> yeah. It does. Time Remember Jordan, the last dance. That feels like it was like two years ago. That was like three months ago. Four months ago. <laughs> this is crazy. 2020 has been wild. No one could have predicted. Been very wild. Like, I don't understand. I honestly don't understand Tiger King at all. But that's a different topic. I, guess. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't <laughs> that's for next time. We'll break down Tiger King. I guess a tiger just killed somebody recently at that park or something. Did you guys see that? Like I saw that on the news today. Somebody was feeding a tiger from that camp oh, or whatever they call it, and it like bit somebody or something. Yeah. I know nothing. Tiger. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Tiger King is. Yeah. 
Carol Baskins play? play? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's safe in Portugal. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Yvonne, who you got? I got Dexter Loomis. I'm with T you and TJ. Dexter Loomis scares you a little bit. He's like, he pops out of nowhere with those little eyeballs. I'm like, where the hell? Where the heck you come from? I'm like jumping out of my ceiling. Popped up. She's very fearful of Dexter Loomis. Yes. That stare kind of scares her. When, when we're watching wrestling, yes. she kind of does one of these. <laughs> I'm six foot two and it scares me. <laughs> That's why. Who you got? You going with Cameron Grimes, right? I'm going with Cameron. Just because okay. I can't do a few three fools, so I got to get All right. All right. Don't call Tyson hit a fool. Yeah, don't call him a fool. He was in a strap match. He'll, uh, I don't want him to come over here. That's rough, man. Like after after hearing it, like in person, because you know when you watch it on TV, people are probably saying those mm -hmm. straps aren't going to hurt. They hurt. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of times, like you'll be getting strapped, and it'll be like, uh, like, like across your back, but they'll, it'll wrap around, and like everybody knows, like your, your skin is so sensitive, like on your ribs and stuff, like when those, when that strap whips around and cracks around, that hurts so much, mm -hmm. and like, it, it, you know, to the audience, maybe they don't, obviously they don't understand. It's it, what we do is, you know, it's very different, but uh, those strap matches. I don't think people same with like kendo sticks. I don't know if everyone understands how much like kendo sticks actually hurt like a lot. Can you explain that? Like how like how does that work? Like how what does it feel like when a kendo stick hits your body? Oh man, it's like so you've seen it on TV, and so the first time you get hit with one, you maybe think like, oh, there's something to it, like it's gonna have a lot of give to it, but it it doesn't. And like th that noise that you hear is exactly how it feels. It's not it's not some kind of trick. Like the it hurts like. Uh, uh, Sa Sasha still has like a, a welt on her leg from getting hit with the kendo stick. I think last year's Hell in a Cell. Like it, those those Damn. welts and those kendo sticks are those are for real. Dude, that sounds rough because you know watching on TV, you mm -hmm. can just hear that smack like it's in your right. house. So like I couldn't imagine how that would feel. That's crazy. Exactly, and you just got to imagine it feels exactly the way it sounds like that cracking noise, and then like the the pain kind of comes in like like a half a second or a second later. So it's. It's a weird thing, but yeah, those kendo sticks are no joke. Oh, I believe that. That's always been my favorite weapon. Just watching growing up was the kendo stick. Like playing like the PlayStation games and stuff. That's my go-to weapon <laughs> always. <laughs> I think mine was go chair on the game. I watched Mark Henry on a full European tour. Mark Henry against uh, Fit Finley on my first European tour with WWE, and every night, like they would do this thing where Mark would end up catching. There was a street fight, and Mark would catch the kendo stick. And then he would like break it over his knee, and like you know, people probably think that it's like gimmicked or something, but it's not. That's just that's just Mark Henry's strength. <laughs> Strong guy. Right. Strong guy. That's Mark being Mark, right? right. He's the world yeah. Same kind of thing that would like hurt the hell out of me. Mark's just breaking over his knee, like it's. <laughs> oh, I, get it or something. I feel like Mark could probably break people over his knee if he if he chose if he to. Want to. Yeah, if he wanted yeah, to. Yeah, he. Yeah, he's. I'm glad he's my friend because he's very. <laughs> He's a genuinely nice dude. Like if you ever oh, hear him awesome. talking, like he he's genuinely a really good dude. Um, this next match is the hardest for me to predict. I have no idea. Uh, Leon Ruff kind of came out of nowhere, won yep. the North American Championship, beat Gargano twice. Yep. Technically, he beat him twice. You know, it's a tiny bit of help from Priest along the way. But uh, man, this one's rough for me. I'm a Damian. I'm a big Damian Priest guy. I think the guy's got the look. He's getting him better in the ring. I think he's going to be a huge star. Same with Gargano. I really like Gargano. So I'm torn between these two. But I also feel like that means Leon Ruff will win because that's not who I'd pick. That and that's tough. how it works. <laughs> that's tough. Yeah, Leon Ruff's been on a, a hell of a roll lately. Mm -hmm. uh, this is tough because when, when it's those triple threat matches, it's it's always a tough one to, to really call. Uh yeah, and, and Damian Priest has, has looked pretty good the last few months, too. He's he's done a great job. Um, I think I'm going to go with maybe Johnny re regaining that North American title. I like it. That's my guess, too, because you have the ghost face factor. And, uh, Who is it? I don't mess with ghost face. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea. Gargano has something always up his sleeve, the ghost face, and, you know, he has something on his mind. I got Johnny Gargano, too, for that reason. So nobody's taking Priest. I'm surprised. I'm taking Leon Ruff. That's tough. Well, a Priest was he – I mean, it's just that's how I 
he did too well on the next two last night. So they, you know, yeah, I mean? it's the whole, they got the last laugh before the pay-per-view. So they're probably not going to win right. the thing that most, right. I feel like Damian priest leaves Gargano laid out rough, kind of knocks him out of the way, somehow gets the pinfall, even though he's not actually responsible for it. One of those kind of finishes. He gets the sure, pin, sure. like priest hits his finisher. He gets the pin. He sneaks out with the belt and then Gargano is going to lose his mind. And that's going to be entertaining to watch unfold. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the, that scenario definitely could be. Absolutely. It's going to be good stuff. Whatever, <laughs> who wants it's going to be a fun match? It will. I'm honestly hoping that the women's match closes. So I'm on, I'm, I, I, put, I put these in the order I would book them. So uh, the, this match has a lot. Mm-hmm. I put the Kings of NXT because Pat McAfee loves to call his group that apparently. Uh, the Undisputed Era in the Pat McAfee thing is definitely uh, nothing new. After uh, McAfee, I want to ask you, Tyson, um, what did you think of McAfee's first match with NXT? Because I thought it was one of the mo- more memorable debuts from an outside. Like, he's a punter coming into wrestling. I think he did a really good job. Dude, unbelievable. Um, I, I, I have so much praise for Pat McAfee. What's so funny is, like, uh, a lot of times I, I, I miss, like, the uh, the pre-shows. And so... Um, his, his, um, his YouTube show, like, popped up on my YouTube randomly and I watched a few clips and I thought, man, this guy's a punter and he's so funny. Like I would expect, like, I guess, you know, you just wouldn't expect a punter to have so much personality. And he was, he's a very funny guy. Then all of a sudden I noticed like he, he had a lot of like wrestling references on his show. And, uh, and I was like, wait a minute. And then Natty's like, yeah, he's, he's, he's in NXT. He does like the pre-show stuff. And I'd, I'd never, met him and i've never uh i have never caught him on the pre-show so i literally didn't know and then i remember watching that match with adam cole it blew me away that match was absolutely amazing um i don't know i don't know who would um you know floyd mayweather ronda um i guess like lt like who 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 would even compare to that first match of pat mcafee's like i i really like floyd and big show i like it a lot at the time i like i really liked lt and bam bam of course ronda had an amazing debut that at wrestlemania that tag match but i don't know man pat mcafee singles match is also a little bit different with a little bit different pressure and he 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 excelled he excelled so i have nothing but praise for pat mcafee yeah and on the mic He's good on the mic. You want to punch him in the face. Yeah, like exactly. that's what it's what you're supposed to. Yvonne, exactly. Yvonne all the time's like, I wish I could just punch him in his throat. Because he like, drives that's, me nuts. That's what you that's what that's his job. And he's like Oni Larkin and Danny Birch and Pete Dunn. Like it just works. It does, it yeah, works. It's a very good table exactly. of guys. It's one of those funny things that like if you were to maybe see it on a piece of paper, it might not work, but you see mm-hmm. it in the ring and it like is like you're like, Yeah, that works perfectly. Why of course you would put these four together, but that's not always the case. No, right. um, Chuck. Who do you got? Um, I got. I gotta go with. Uh, I keep making undisputed era lose everything, but and they keep winning, so I don't know. But I'm gonna go with the Kings of NXT on this one, just for pure. Right. They're still getting them. You know, they're still making you want to punch McAfee in the face and him right. winning that with, with that and keep that going. <laughs> so I you're got, going there too. No, I got undisputed era. <laughs> no. I got them getting the revenge on. Yeah. Seeing them, I think it's about time for them to shut them up and, st- and step back up like they were, showing them the real Undisputed Era. I'm going Undisputed Era as well. Mm-hmm. I'm very eager to see what these guys pull off in in that match. Like the the spots that they're going to have, the creativity of all eight of these dudes. McAfee, I'm interested to see him in the ring again. Because yeah, like, yeah. he's Big one of the guys I feel like he always wants to top what he did before. Like I've heard interviews with him where he's like, I'm not in NXT to be number five, number 10. I'm there to be the best mm-hmm. at what I, yep. I want to be the best I can be. So I feel like he's going to go out and try to top himself. And I'm interested to see if he can. Yep. Who we got, TJ? Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go with the Undisputed Era, but I do, I do look for, and maybe it's, maybe I'm setting the bar a little too high, but I do look for Pat to maybe have the show stealing moment of the night. Yeah. I dig it. Yep. I'd be down for another Pat versus Adam Cole. Me too. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I can handle that match every week, I think. Hell yeah. yeah. That's the thing with NXT every week. 
like you'll see Matt, like wrestling fans complain, like, oh my God, it's these two guys again. It's like, there's some matches that it doesn't matter. I'll watch it every single week. No. And I obviously, you know, from a, it's different from a performer's perspective, but like anytime when I was at NXT, anytime it was like myself against Neville, I was, I was like, okay, I mean, I'll, I'll do this every, I'll do this four episodes every month when we tape, if you want, that's no problem. That's easy for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Sami Zayn and KO. Like if they book them on SmackDown for the next ten weeks fighting each other, I'm good with it because yeah. you know they're going to tear it down every single week. Sure, because the performers are going to be creative enough that it's not going to be the same match. It might be the same matchup. It's not going to be the same match. There's a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people don't understand that when they see a lot of these feuds, you know, that last longer than three weeks, you know, people will get mad about that. It's the same stuff, but it's mm -hmm. not as a story. And a lot of these matches are very, very different. <laughs> That's when you can tell a lot of people are just kind of reading a headline or who's actually like watching the content. If, if you're complaining about it, you know, I get it. But if depending on who's who's in there, you you might just be complaining just to complain playing because there's a good right. chance if it's the right guys they could wrestle 20 times and it's not the same match once they don't duplicate the same match one time look at drew and randy yeah yeah people complaining like oh my god it's like why are you complaining that we're seeing these two of the top guys mm -hmm. in the world fight again i'm going to be biased but like and same with like sasha and bailey yeah yeah Absolutely, Sasha and Bailey. Yeah, those two mm -hmm. are phenomenal together they yeah. are i can watch those two every night i think Me too. yeah <laughs> Like they had that hell in a cell, and then you know the next week on SmackDown they had they had a three segment singles match, and like, both matches were very different. And I I didn't really see anyone complaining, but I'm sure there were. Hey, there's always those yeah. people. Uh, yeah. That mat that match on SmackDown was great. Like I was glad that it got all that time they delivered, and I'm pretty excited. Uh, this Sunday I think tribute to the troops. It's uh Bailey. And Natty against Sasha and Bianca. Who's winning that yes, one? Team yeah, that's, <laughs> who do I have? <laughs> we know who we have. That's Natty and Bailey. Natty and Bailey got that one all day. That's what I would have too, TJ. Yeah, so I plan to do that on SmackDown too. Bianca and uh, Natty, then Bailey's out there interfering. Like, I'm really excited to see the. Like, I think Bianca's just about to start hitting she her is. stride now that she's first on SmackDown. Time I saw her, first time I saw her, I knew she's a superstar, like a megastar. It's just a matter of time. Um, it's funny you, you say that. So then when uh, when I saw that tag match, it, it got me thinking, and this is, again, not a slight to anybody else whatsoever, but almost kind of like that old SmackDown 6. I, and I, I felt like with the, with the women, you, you kind of have that in the nucleus with those four, with Sasha... Bianca, of course, Natty and, and Bailey. I mean, and I and I think very highly of um, Ruby and Liv, um, mm -hmm. Carmella. Uh, Carmella, yeah. I'm a fan of. So I, I think, understand. but I think with those four kind of as a nucleus, I think um, I honestly think sky's the limit. And I think we can kind of, if given the the chance, I think it almost can recreate a little bit of like that SmackDown Six kind of, uh, but in a women's version. I agree. The I SmackDown agree. Women's Division is absolutely amazing. loaded. Yes. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. And then amazing. segueing perfectly into a absolutely loaded NXT Women's Division, yeah. which is oh, funny because you think of all these women that could be coming up in the upcoming years, and yeah. it's like, yep, it's insane. All eight of these women I could see being superstars yeah. at uh, on the you know I don't yeah. like to call it the main roster. I like to view it as equal. Like NXT, Raw, SmackDown, it's all the same on to Raw me. And, but, and so, um, like this is. Someone might take this as kind of an insult. It's not meant as that. It's actually meant as a comment. But like all eight, all eight of these girls, these women, can come on the main roster and fit right in anytime. No, I believe that 100 percent absolutely. I do too. And out, you know, and not only fit in, they would probably main event a lot of mm -hmm. them. They would <laughs> absolutely. I mean, just watching them on NXT, I mean, they don't mess around. It's intense. It's, like they don't miss. Yeah, no, I, I agree. <laughs> I watched that ladder match last night, and I think. Um, I'm interested to see like Raquel Gonzalez in a few years. Yeah. yeah. Give give her like another two years. Yeah, I watched her with Rhea a couple weeks ago, and it was like the match stole the show to me. Like I I went yeah. back after it was over and I watched it again. Yeah. And For like sure. Rhea won, but Raquel looked so good. It's like you look at Raquel in a whole different light. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't matter she lost. She looked no. fantastic. 
Um, who do you got in this one? This one was difficult for me. Because yeah, I like so many of these women. Uh, I wish uh wish my girl Indy Hartwell was in this one. Uh you think she could play some kind of role though? Yeah, I like I, I, I like the role and and yesterday getting the ladder to to the <laughs> team was like pretty clever. It was it was cool to it was cool that like she did that. Um Man, I'm going to go with uh, Team Blackheart on this one. I'm going Team LeRae. Uh Candace, there's something about her right now. I feel like she's just been on – all these women have been on fire, but Candace has just kind of found her sweet spot, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. Like, you're right about that. On the mic, she's on – like, she's entertaining as hell. Her and Gargano's segments are great. Like, her and Johnny are really hot. Like, I'd be really mm -hmm. happy if – they both, if they both got the gold, I feel like the arrogance that they'd have every week would just, I don't know. I think it would bring an extra something to NXT. So like whoever were to up in them is instantly going to be like beloved by everybody. Right. Yeah. 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 I know what you're saying. That makes a lot of sense. So I think Indy Hartwell plays a key role mm -hmm. and they still won with her outside interference, even though you look at the team of like, with like Ripley and Ember and all the experience they have, you know, main eventing, I still give the – I have to go with Team Ray. But this – both war game matches are going to be great. Yeah, man. Yeah, well. Y Yvonne, you're the – so Yvonne is our women's expert. She specializes in all these matches. I try to get fans. Watch it every week and try to memorize it every week when I come on. So who do you got? Because you've been watching this closer than me and Chuck do. I got Team Ray. I think Indy Hartwell, TJ. I'm a big fan of Indy Hartwell as well. I always liked her. Um I think she's going to play a big face. Maybe the ghost, the ghost face plays involved in this too, maybe. Because she's been helping with Shotzi Blackheart's tank got ran over. The ghost face got involved in it too. Yeah. So that could happen. Cool. Let right me guess. Us. You're taking Blackheart. Blackheart. Um, I'm going to go with Team LeRae, actually, for your same reasons. I really like Candace these days, so I, I'm just on the Candace team. <laughs> I've been a big fan of her so. since I started watching NXT. I was – I was caught off guard by the Tony Storm uh, quote unquote heel turn. Yeah, me too. A little bit too. Yeah. Cause she just During came back. Yeah. So that's interesting. And I really like Dakota Kai. I feel like she's kind of, mm -hmm. you know, not in Saudi League, like getting lost in the shuffle a little bit in this, but she's been really, really good as well. Then Ember's been great since she came back. And obviously Rhea speaks for herself. Then exactly. EO has been a fantastic champion since she's been there and put on some great matches as well. Her and Ripley was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of uh, EO. I know every week when you turn on NXT, you're, the women's wrestling is top notch, just as well as Raw and SmackDown as yeah. well. Like, yeah. I was really looking forward to when I saw Bianca and Natty, I was like, all right, this is going to be great. Cause it just feels like when the younger wrestlers with Natty, they just yeah. you see them reach that next level. Cause Natty's so good, she gets that out of yeah, them. Yeah, she does. Now you're just so oh, that, Yeah, I mean, she's, that, she, I know it's, she likes uh, pumping those numbers now, but there's a reason right. that she has the most, the most matches of, of any woman. Right. Ever there's a reason for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you look back to her on NXT, like her and Charlotte stick out. Mm -hmm. Like that match oh between God. her and Charlotte. Those, those two went and stole the show from me and Neville, and I was kind of kind of mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> she comes back, and you're like, listen, man, on, this, man. Was, this was my show. You right. really need Brett and Rick out there? Come on. <laughs> I did it. Help, help, help me and Neville out a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah, dude. Uh, it should be a fun show. I know you're kind of a busy guy. You got stuff to produce and things to do. Before we let you go, uh, we had the um, – Unfortunate passing of a legend yesterday, yes. uh, Pat Patterson. Yes. Uh, do you have any of uh, – want to tell some of your favorite memories of him? I mean, man, anytime you saw Pat, like anytime I ever, ever saw him, he would always be in a good mood. I never saw him in like a bad mood. He's always joking, always laughing, always telling jokes, sometimes a lot of times the same joke, but uh, – You'll have that. <laughs> but uh, you laugh anyway. And, and, and the – he'll tell the same joke, but he might tell it to someone who hasn't heard it. So then like you kind of watch him get them with it. And um, man, he just was so smart when it came to, when it comes to what we do and, and just his, his mind. I think we've all, everyone that's in WWE and, and even, you know, outside of WWE obviously have taken so much from Pat. Like for example, like he, he mentored Michael Hayes, who's a very, very good producer. And Michael's helped me out a lot. And, and you know, I, Pat helped me when I was a talent at certain times, too. So you kind of, you know, and Pat and Brett work very closely together. And, and Brett and I talk a lot about wrestling. So, like, his influence is felt everywhere, man. He, um, 
physically he may be gone, but he, he, his, uh, his touch on, on the business is, <laughs> is going to go on forever. So that's kind of all we have in life is we, we all kind of become friends said this to me the other day, we all kind of become stories. And fortunately for Pat, there's a lot of Pat Patterson stories that are going to live on. And he's going to, um, he's going to have his hands on future generations that like he'll never even meet, but that are going to, the, the knowledge will keep getting passed on and people that have never even met Pat in 20 or 30 years from now will be using a lot of Pat's philosophies in wrestling. And, you know, maybe they won't even know it's from Pat who knows, but it's just, it's just a kind of funny like that. And it's cool that he's going to have such a long lasting effect on, on our business. Yep, absolutely. So I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like uh, he has touched everybody's lives here. Yeah. So it's phenomenal mm-hmm. that yes. his life, he right. will live on in, in the ring. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. NXT uh, had a nice tribute to him yesterday. I saw that. It was beautiful. I listened to uh, Busted Open this morning. They had a nice episode yesterday where they brought on a lot of people to talk about uh, the impact he had. Just really nice to hear all the positive things yeah. um, that he's done. Mm-hmm. And like we talked about before we came on, it's like 2020, man. It's just like one thing after another. It, is, it doesn't stop, man. It really doesn't. All right. One final question for you, sir, before we let yes. you go. Another big thing that happened uh, recently was the retirement of The Undertaker, the dead wow. man himself. <laughs> Your opinions on that and some maybe, uh, if you have one, a favorite memory of The Undertaker. Man, it was crazy. Like, uh, Obviously, we knew going into the show that it was his retirement, uh, the farewell. And uh, but then when it goes down and it becomes real, it hits you a little bit differently. Like uh, that picture of uh, myself and Natty with him it was very funny. Natty said, hey, do you want to get a do you want to get a picture with with Taker? And uh, it's like, yeah, I, I don't have one. I have, I, you know, uh, there was one time he came in the ring and beat up Heart Dynasty in crime time. And uh so I have that, <laughs> <laughs> which was really cool, man. To be in that ring and have the lights go black and you hear that gong, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So it was very cool that I had that one time with him. Um, I'm trying to think. It, it was it was very emotional just because he is he is that guy. And 30 years is unbelievable in, in one company? Come on, it's unheard of. Uh, some memories. I mean, the, obviously that time he came and attacked us, it was funny. He kind of looked at me and he was like, well, I, uh, I knew the idea was that he's coming in. He's going to hit his four finishing moves on the four of us. Tombstone, last ride, uh, choke slam in the uh, Hell's Gate. Yeah. 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 And uh, in my mind, I wanted to take the last ride, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> the lightest of the four of us. And then uh, Taker looks at me and, he, you know, he'd already been like pretty friendly with me. At this point, I'd been in the company on the main roster for about a year, and he's like, "Uh, just due to just due to everything, uh, you're you're you've been elected to take the last ride." And I was like, "I'm good with that." That's perfect. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm thinking, "Can I get higher than he got, Christian?" There you go. Right. Um, yeah, he was always good for giving advice and and checking out matches and. Um, Whatever advice he ever gave me, I, I always utilized it and I applied it. And I, it's funny, again, like I was kind of saying about Pat, he gave me some certain advice about um, just certain points in a match. And it's exactly the same. Like that, that advice he gave me, I pass on to this day uh, when I'm training people or when I'm producing their match. I try to pass on that exact same um, intensity that that he kind of helped me with. So um it, i was glad that we got that picture with him and i'm glad you know i remember seeing him at dusty's funeral and it was actually right after my neck injury i hadn't had surgery yet and i remember like so this is something very little but i remember him like opening a door for me and i said no no take her you go he's like, no 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 and then he like held the door open for me i had my neck brace on and i remember him like kind of like patting me on the back and almost like rubbing my back and i was like this is the undertaker this guy <laughs> <laughs> this guy's been this guy's been pe- putting people you know, bringing them to rest in peace for, at that point, 25 years. And here he is the door open for me. What the hell is going on? But, uh, you, you know, I feel like always had a very good, um, I mean, definitely from my end, for sure, a very good um, respect for each other. And, um, I mean, it sucks. 
it sucks obviously, but also at the same time, it's, it's kind of a cool thing because like, it does have to come to an end and it was good that he had his moment and he had his, I guess his send off. Absolutely. I, I got absolutely. a little teary eyed seeing when they did the, uh, the Paul bear. Yep. Um, oh yeah. 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 I got to be emotional too. Let me ask you this. Cause we had a question in the comments about it. Uh, do you think that, uh, he's going to end up behind the scenes, helping train people pe- uh, in the PC? Because I feel like he'd be a huge asset to have back there. So he's like too, he's too good at this and he's too embedded, not only in this business, but in our company that he's going to, Undertaker is going to do what, whatever the hell he wants. But <laughs> That's he's, always, right. he's, always, he's always been given back, but I, like he definitely will. He definitely will have some role backstage or as a trainer, but, or, or even, I don't know, like almost a liaison, like who knows? Like the, honestly with Undertaker, the, the thoughts and the possibilities are endless and just, in terms of like wrestling minds that I've been around, his is always, I've always agreed with like any advice I've ever heard him say, I've pretty much agreed with it. So, um, I mean, as long as he's still with us, with our company, he, uh, we're in good hands. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll, right. I'll be honest. I was sitting there and, you know, at the farewell and I'm just like, when the lights go out. I'm ready for Bray to pop up. <laughs> a lot of my friends told me the same thing. They were. Like, I'm a big Bray Wyatt guy. Yeah, like I are. went Black Friday shopping on WWEshop.com, and I spent way too much money on his merchandise. Already, like, yeah. I was, I was waiting. <laughs> it's like everybody's like, uh, "What match do you want to see? What's your dream? I want to see Fiend Taker." Yeah. And then I saw Taker in an interview said that you know, a couple of years ago he might have had something for the Fiend, but now it's kind of toward the end. So right. Yeah. But it's kind of cool though, because seeing him and Bray work was cool. But that was a really good, well done farewell, it especially was. in a you know we're in a pandemic and I they know. it was done as well as it possibly could have been. Mm-hmm. It would have been better with fans, but I thought it was really well done. Sure. Well, what was crazy is that it was thirty years to the day. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. That's why people were like, "Oh my God, why did they not wait till fans came back?" It's like thirty yeah. days to right. the exact pay per view. Exactly. Like you yeah. can't yeah. really well, claim yeah. much better yeah. than that. And, like, here's the thing, like, obviously, I, you know, I'm pretty sure Undertaker's career qualifies for a Hall of Fame career. So Absolutely. Absolutely. eventually he'll be in the Hall of Fame and there will be fans there. And you'll, that'll be the, like, the part two of his send off, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Right. That's a very good point, actually. I mean, yeah, that, mm-hmm. that will happen. And that's kind that'll of be the one that all of all the fans and, and all of us can all be a part of together with him. So that part will be cool. Yeah, that'd be phenomenal. I can't wait for that. Me too. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, he's uh yeah. one of a kind. He's on my Mount Rushmore. That's why, because there'll never be another one. Never one like no. him. Nope. No. I already miss him just talking about it now. Right. I'm, starting, I'm starting to get teary eyed again. I'm already, I'm already <laughs> it's it's gonna be weird. Every January, I'm just gonna be like, Where's the gong? Like I'm <laughs> still gonna be Absolutely. All right, brother. Well, hey, we appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us tonight. I know you my pleasure. you gotta run, man. So hey. Pleasure is always like always on the side of the table, Absolutely. the side of the camera. Awesome. And, I'll, and I'll be back. It was, it's always great speaking with you guys, man. I, I love your guys' take on wrestling and, and what we do. So it's very, very cool um, to, to come on here and discuss it with you guys. Well, um, we were talking earlier. It's bizarre. We used to be sitting at Chuck's kitchen table just kitchen like table. talking into microphones that sometimes work. Now we're talking to people that we used to like <laughs> love watching perform. So it's, Damn. like you said, That's the awesome. honors are We appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank, right, you, thank you very much. Stay safe out there. Take care, guys. Stay safe. All right, you bye. too. Bye bye. That's still bizarre. Like yeah. he's so cool. No, like, we cool, just talked yeah. to Tyson Kidd. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna recuperate myself real quick. Um, I'm sweating. Whew. Check <laughs> out. All right, so we are the buzz. We are with the buzz. What happened to AE? Nobody really cares. We well, are. Hold on, hold on. Don't we get this? We just got done talking to TJ Wilson. We are for the second. I'm time. trying to segue to the commercial. Oh, okay. my bad. <laughs> we are all professional podcasters here, and we are going to show you the new but same lineup brought to you by The Buzz. This is War. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti fall? Be ready for war. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Tell them that's what we're ready for. War. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti fall? Be ready for war. Tell them I'm ready in the opponent. The crown heavy and every minute that shows it. A path only fit for kings. And you wanna know what this court means. What did you win this for? If it isn't getting more rings, then you gon' have to switch your team. Uh. 
Trust me, it gets more mean. I'm a nightmare going up against your dream. First step is explosive like a bomb hit. Bet if I let it fly, I cannot miss. And you ain't got a chance at the top 10 when you getting clamped all night by your locksmith. On the block, throwing lobs to my top pigs. I'm a chef, no look with the top dish. Tie game, through the pressure with the clock ticks. Cross over, step back, hit a shot, squish. Tell them that's what we ready for. All right, guys, that is the buzz and that is all of the live lineup shows and one that oh that's not always live i gotta get that logo off my head it's freaking me out yeah, boom there we go a, now you can see the rest of my receding hairline oh, here you like the logo on your head. shut up oh. anyway thank you again to tj Wills for coming on that was awesome yeah, was. and uh i will go back and watch and write down all of our picks and oh, we'll see. Because like mm -hmm. if TJ wins, he'll be the new Wednesday night champion. So his title's now vacant. <laughs> we can't have it was that. great meeting. <laughs> so if TJ Wilson wins the Wednesday night championship, uh, I think we could do that. I think that's what I'm going to do. Could. I'm going to write them down, and you three, the winners, Wednesday night champion. I dig it, man. I dig I it, too. Just be the champion going forward. And, then and that's good for you guys, because if one of you win, you won't have to lose to me at Rumble. Um. Well, that ain't going to happen regardless. Uh, oh, boy. But yeah. if TJ Wilson does win the Wednesday Night Championship bet with those predictions, there we go. I'm going to call shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to call, like, what's it called when you, like, background or you have insider yeah. trading? In mm -hmm. Insider trading. That's yeah. what right. I'm going to call it. Insider trading. And that's illegal here in America. <laughs> but yeah, I want to appreciate I appreciate the guys, people in the comments. Sorry we didn't really get to them. He, he has a tight schedule. He's producing. He's training. He's doing a lot of stuff. So, it wasn't like you said, he's going to have more time in the future. We just really appreciate him coming Absolutely. on and supporting us. Uh, just like our buddies over at Manscaped, uh, promo codes at the bottom of the screen, 20% off your order. It's Christmas time. You know, keep your, keep the woman in your life happy. I mean, go there, use the code RSH2020. I'm doing yeah. a lot of cool products, man. Any kind of razors that you need, I, I mean, it's, it's great, this man. clean shave right here is from Manscaped. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, so, it's, it's a good product. Uh, I had to clean up. You definitely needed to clean. But um, all right, man. Uh, let's yeah. jump into yeah. some. Uh, we talked NXT. We did. Let's jump we into did. some SmackDown and Raw before uh, you know, we end this here. Okay. So I, you know, I, I actually did enjoy SmackDown and Raw this week. I know your boy. That's why I put this question. Yeah, How impressive Murphy. is your yeah. boy, Buddy Murphy, yeah. been since going to SmackDown? Because he looks. Yeah. Killed. I'll take your he word. Phenomenal. Yeah. He does look phenomenal. He does. Um, yeah, AJ definitely stole that from me. Uh, <laughs> he definitely, did. definitely. He did, definitely. I mean, he, he knew. We knew each other from back in the TNA days. Yeah, school. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Wish I did. Yeah, man. I, I've liked Buddy Murphy since day one. Yeah, Roman Ish. Reigns match. And uh, yeah, man, you were right. sold. And yeah. You weren't a big Roman Reigns. Wasn't at the that level place yet. he well, was yep. right now. He wasn't the head of the table. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> So like, he was stale. So like in wrestling fans' minds, he was kind of stale. Yeah, it's right. like, yeah, he's going to main event mania. Yes, he's great. We get it. But like, there's no he was, texture to the story. He was the guy that everybody knew could be the guy, but nobody knew how to get him to be the guy yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. He was exactly. that. He it was takes the, the right story, right. which is what we see all the time. Make Storytelling person, is very yeah. important. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the dude's ceiling is? Like, you think he'd be a world champ? I see champ. What do you, uh, what, what would you do with him right now? In reality, I would say the dude, there is no reason he could not be a main event, main eventer in two years. I think two years from him, he's been around for already, what, two or three yeah. years now. Mm -hmm. So he was and, great in 205 Live. He was. And right now, <laughs> he's in the main event picture as a side character. Yep. So he's building that. He's building that believability at this point, going one on one with Seth Rollins and being involved in Rey Mysterio yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so now we're really seeing, and the people who matter, you know, Vince McMahon, the guys backstage, they're seeing what he can really do, and he's been killing it. <laughs> he is, absolutely. So me and Yvonne were talking about this. We were texting about this during SmackDown. What if him and Dominic teamed up for a little bit? You kind of get that, and yeah, they maybe go be against, a great tag uh, team. you know, Ziggler and Root. The SmackDown tag team division could use some new faces, right? So right. Dominic and Buddy be good. I get them some spring time. They'd be on weekly. Right now they're feuding, I think, with Ziggler and Root. Got Rude. the win this mm -hmm. past week, they right? Did. Oh yeah. They so did. that. The, the only that makes me nervous though when they throw him into a tag team because we all know that Vince McMahon doesn't want really to get into tag teams these days. That's, That's not knock anybody as a tag team, they're all phenomenal people, right? But other than Jey Uso, it seems like there has been no main eventer guys who came from a tag. And Jey team. Uso felt kind of out of the blue, even though he's yeah. great. And, right. you know, and there was I didn't some, see that coming. It's a luck factor with this storyline, the family thing with Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm taking that away from Jay, but right. that's why this is happening. <laughs> so that makes me nervous if they do throw Buddy into that because one thing Buddy needs to improve on or showcase more, if he can, I guess, is his mic skills. That's the one mm -hmm. thing that we're lacking 
But that being that said, that kind of comes with time. It does. And that's why, you know, two, three years from now, if he's more comfortable, if he has the opportunity to have more mic time, he's had some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, he's I, not old by any means. No, he's got a lot no, of room. He's to got a long time. Yeah, coming. he does. So if I had to put money down, if he's ever going to be a, a WWE champion, I'd probably not put money on it at this time. However, I really, really want to happen. <laughs> Gambling's never a good idea. <laughs> never. No. never so we money. all know why. <laughs> never. You don't want to get air money. money. But, uh, no, anyway. Don't do that. My biggest take from SmackDown, talk about a guy that needs to be in the main event. It's KO. I mean, how great was that end of SmackDown Dude, this week? I'm going to let you say what you guys say about KO, and then I'm going to get my opinion on uh, KO. It's going to be the exact fucking same. Oh, okay. So, oh. KO, the last couple of weeks has been flirting with the – I'm sick of you, Jey Uso. I'm sick of Roman stuff. I'm sick of this mm -hmm. shit. I'm Kevin Owens. I'm the man. I don't care about shit. People say, oh, my God, he uses a stunner. He kind of has awesome. the same personality as Stone Cold. I don't give a shit. I loved the end. He's like, this your cousin? This the, You're the head of family. Come get me. I ain't scared of you. Bam. Stunner. Beat his ass. Throw him through. It was great. I got goosebumps. I was like, this is the Kevin Owens that we probably would have had if that thing with Goldberg didn't happen because right. Kevin Owens was money. Festival of Friendship with Chris Jericho. Fantastic. Goldberg. Goldberg's like that roadblock, which I get it. Respect Goldberg, whatever, I forever don't. and always. But <laughs> I don't. he almost he stopped Kevin Momentum's Kevin Owens' momentum. He almost stopped the Fiend's momentum at Super Showdown or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Yep. They need. I'm I'm very excited for Roman Reigns, and you know the expectation is Roman's going to hold on to that belt forever, like we talked about with Tyson with Raquel and Rhea. Mm -hmm. Just because Kevin don't go over doesn't bad phrasing. Just because Kevin doesn't win does not mean he can't go over and be elevated. Kevin Owens fits that SmackDown mold yeah. of like back in the day when you had like Batista. You didn't have like the top, top guy. Like Cena was on Raw, right? right. Triple H was on Raw. But you had like Edge, Eddie Guerrero, all the kind of people that were viewed as mid cards where they got the chance to shine on SmackDown, boom, elevated. I feel like KO is right on that same path. That think? was the best he's looked. Dude, he's in a long, a long time. Yeah, he was on lot. NXT last week on commentary. Yeah, he was it was great. It. Yeah, he was. So That's Kevin Owens, it was Kevin Owens' week, and I'm excited to see where this goes. Do you see Talking Smack? No, I wanted to. I he saw, grabbed Paul Heyman. I saw he did that. And like, yeah, I was I, like, dude. I, I saw it on Facebook. I meant to go. I was at work actually. I meant to go back to watch it, and I forgot. I dude, do want to see. What that. an eventful three days. Yeah. Like the dude. I can't wait. And it's the had, match on most. He had the KO show on NXT when he was on there. He think about TLC. Yeah, yeah. Think about TLC. You have you have to go back and watch that too. He's I, hilarious. I, I, I he's like he, he he he's like dun dun. He's Johnny Gargano comes. I'll do it real quick. And he's oh, like, I'm hilarious. sick of Damian Priest and Kevin Owens. Is like, <laughs> oh my god. And Gargano's like, what's your problem? He's like, we're in an interview segment. You said his name, so he's going to come down here. Every time and then he's like, five, four, four, three, two, one, and it doesn't work. And then he's like, well, NXT's really changed since the last time I was here. Yep. Three, two, one, it doesn't work. He's like. Then it hits. He's like, "Oh, okay. I'm. It's because I left, ain't it, or something." He's <laughs> like, "Every time you open your mouth, that guy's knows music's gonna hit." He's like, "I got a chair for you, girl." I was like, I don't he, want "He's like, do you guys?" Yeah. He Priest comes it. in. He's like, "Here, sir. Do you want a chair?" He's like, "No, nah, I'm good, bro." Gargano comes in. He's like, "Do you want a chair?" Gargano's like, "I want a freaking chair." And he's he not screaming. Kevin Owens. And then like, here comes Priest, and oh, yeah. I probably shouldn't say this as a as a one third full time wrestling podcaster, but I've been pretty stale on wrestling for. As quite a while, as you all know. Last week, I sat down and just like watched all of SmackDown, start to finish, uninterrupted. I was in the bedroom by myself, <coughs> no animals, no bullshit around me to distract me. And I thoroughly, I think it kind of relit my my fire a little bit. I was like, this is fucking fun, actually. So then I like I got into it again, and I did the same thing with Raw. Like, this is fucking fun, you know. And like I'm back, and I think the product is getting better, which is making I, I me agree. get into it a little bit more. So I'm really excited. I really enjoyed watching NXT today. It's like, this is actually really entertaining again. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they've cut back on the stuff you didn't like. Exactly. Yeah, that's They're the not. Thing. The that's stories the point, yeah. are great. Every match is really quick. I mean, every match has a – Thatcher and Ciampa has been built up beautifully, yep. which you watch last night and you don't watch all the time. We have lives. We have shit to do. You're married. You know, I play with action figures. It's fine. But <laughs> – Tommaso Ciampa. Me and him both doing his kids. So, back to fingers, yep. Storytelling. <laughs> storytelling in this match. <laughs> Cameron Grimes and Dexter Loomis. This has been a two-month building story. Yeah, it has. This has been – this match right here is probably the least built, but it's been built mm -hmm. over the course of one month. It's built and really well, it's, too. I'm ready for it. I, I have too. no idea who's winning this match. Nope. 
Yeah, Any maybe. guy could win. Leon Anything Ruff is that right? underdog guy. Who knows? But I'm invested in all of it because curiosity, as they say, killed the cat. I mean, that's what you get curious, and this is why you watch. Oh, this match right here, we talked about with Tyson. Undisputed Era. Yeah. And at Kings of NXT. Right. Here. Pat McAfee. I mean, storytelling. We know the Adam Cole thing, right? Yeah. He took out – they uh, jumped. Uh, they came after Adam Cole. Yeah, man. Storytelling. These eight women. Story. Shotzi right. and Candice mm-hmm. have a big rivalry. So, yeah. like, that's why you're getting invested again because Buddy Murphy's story. Dude, it's killing They got it. Seth. It they is. finally kind of ended it with Seth. Now yeah. Buddy's doing his own thing with, Good. you know, Aaliyah or whatever. The Mysterios. Mysterio family. KO. KO lit me up. I was fired up after yeah, that. Yeah. So I'll that. talk about KO for a second here because, like, I agree with you 100% on everything you've already That said. doesn't happen very uh, often. I, I know. No, that, that doesn't. He was so – even Danae was so into Kevin Owens at that time. Like, excuse me, like, you know, we went to that Raw, that live Raw when, when KO and Jericho was still yep. around and she was mm-hmm. all about Kevin Owens. And then that Goldberg shit happened. And I thought, well, after that's over, KO will get back into it. It just hasn't happened. I guess he pissed off Vince at some point or some mania or something. That's all on the documentary. I don't know. But uh, he's kind of been not doing anything since. And now he had a good, he had a decent feud with Shane that could have been. I, I enjoyed that feud. It, it could, but it didn't end well. Like, you know, they were going for the Austin versus McMahon angle, yeah. and it, 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 didn't, didn't, it didn't end the way – like, they made they pussyfied Kevin Owens, to put it they lightly. Um, they really and then, so they, then it kind of ended after that. And it's like, well, he won, but it didn't put him over. You know what right. I mean? Right. And exactly. then um, now, though, he's in this feud with Roman Reigns. We all know he's not going to win the feud because Roman mm-hmm. Reigns will be champion for a while. Mm-hmm. But like you've already mentioned, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It'll still get him to that next level. Stone Cold got over when he passed out to Bret Hart. He lost, but that's what made him fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin. So the same thing could happen. And just seeing Kevin Owens' intensity, he's getting the mic time, he's getting the face time, he's getting the ring time. So with all of that, Mm -hmm. he's finally back in the main event whooping Jey Uso's ass. The example I like (laughs) to use is, what's your name, son? I'm John Cena. Did he beat Kurt Angle? Nope. No. Did him taking Kurt Angle to the limit and The Undertaker saying, what's your name, son? John Cena. I like you, kid. Did that not get him over? Did he win the match? It works. It but works. just think of it. Kevin Owens is already a couple levels above where Cena was. He's works. already been around for a so while. So, like, yeah. this just gets Kevin to where he should. I feel like he should have been anyway. But he's on Raw. It's three hours. They, you know, sometimes Raw is kind of rough. But he kind of got lost in the shuffle a bit after the Goldberg. He and now he's back. And he looks great. And when you see Talking Smack, you're going to be like, Jesus. Yeah, I, I like, really I'll have to, to watch that, watch that too. I, I watched it. it. He grabs Paul. And you can Paul's just like. <laughs> he's like, listen, I'm just. He's like, I know, I'm just the advocate, right? Yeah, yeah. And Kevin just gives him the business, and yeah, Kayla does. Braxton chicks just like what? uncomfortable. Like you, I just, would, you I'd be her, it. yeah, uncomfortable. So That's awesome, very good. Uh, Raw, we in with Monday Night Raw. It's what I think it's the first time we've ever led off with NXT, which is cool to me because I love NXT. Oh, and we're talking not talking about people in oh, white face paint one. in this show, but anyway, my the greatest dark character. In professional wrestling, now that the dead man has told us for a while. Yeah. The Fiend Bray Wyatt comes in. Uh, Randy Orton was on a moment of bliss. Yep. And Alexa, her performance is still fantastic. Uh, oh, you're wow. my favorite wrestler, Randy. Ha, ha, ha. And Randy's just like. But the way she turns, the way she goes from goofy silly to just fucking like blank and emotionless. And she, yeah, he's like, she does. Because Randy's like, that's my point. She's like, lights flicker and she's like. That's mine. She has all these personalities. She really yeah. does well with so that. Like I, she does. This, I love the slow build because I, I told her about an hour and a half in, I was like, is that the only time we're going to see Bray and Randy tonight? Yeah. I was, it felt, it's for all three hours. So it felt like eternity ago. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I'm going to have to legit wait to see them next yeah. week. Because it's – That was it, man. Yeah. I look for – that match, obviously there's history. Mm-hmm. There's obvious history. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they, uh, and he has the picture in the fun house. So. Well, he, when you join the Wyatt family, the past is coming. What's your expectations for this feud? Um, I mean, I don't have any expectations, I guess. I'm expecting it to be really good. I know I was not – I don't think anybody really liked their last feud. I thought it was really boring for being Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. Right. It was silly. They, they made it too theatrical before COVID. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, but, you know, I think, it's, I think they probably learned from that. They know what doesn't work. So now I feel like they're going to change it. Now we have a listen bliss in the mix. Now it's mm-hmm. not even Bray White anymore. It's no fiend. It's a different Bray mm-hmm. White, you know, when he is the Bray White character still. So I'm expecting good things. I am expecting to see a less of bliss get an RKO at some point. And uh, I'm excited it's for that. Getting there. <laughs> He's going to make me come through that TV. <laughs> That's happening. I'm all with Orton it's there. You, you get what's coming to you. I'm sorry. Or, or. Or, hear me hear this out. So, Randy Orton thinks that 
Alexa Bliss is the Fiend's weakness, right? Yeah. What if Ring Jordan's about to do something to her and the Fiend just fucking does his move to her? What's it called? What's the movie called? I'm sorry. Sister Abigail. Yeah. So what what if the Fiend just sees looks at Randy Orton, takes her, Sister Abigail's her, now he's got no leverage. Randy Orton has the Fiend's right. Because Randy Orton, Orton, Orton thinks that's the leverage. I also think Nikki Cross will play a role in this as well. Yeah, she might. Um, I really want to see Alessa Bliss take a finisher. <laughs> I'll uh, Becky Lynch and the Baron Corbin uh, end of days. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Wait. Yvonne, you're bringing the Randy Orton oh, love gosh. here, so go ahead. I hear it every Monday. <laughs> Hey, it's hard. I mean, I like the theme, but, you know, I've been a Randy Orton fan since day one, so it's really hard to Ish. pick against him. But I like this feud. Um, I think Randy Orton, you know, I mean, he's a devious guy just like the Fiend is, so I think he he can play the Fiend's weakness. I think he can play him a little bit. You know, with Alexa Bliss, he knows what his weakness is, but Randy Orton knows there's more to him besides Alexa Bliss. There's more to his weakness. Randy Orton hears the voices. He hears the Fiend in his head, and I think Randy Orton – do I think he's going to beat The Fiend? I mean, I do, but I don't really think that's going to happen. Alexa Bliss may – I mean, we know she's going to be a factor in this. But yeah, she's taking the sister Abigail. She is. She's taking the sister Abigail. I mean, I, I could see Nikki Cross coming in, but I mean, maybe Nikki Cross can come and help Orton maybe. I mean, I don't really see that. Maybe because, you know, she's not really – You think he burns down the Firefly Funhouse? Could. Did somebody already do that? This one you destroy it once or something? Yeah, you rebuild it. <laughs> but I'm interested Fair with this enough. whole thing. I'm interested Seth. with this, Burn it down. Right, right, right. this whole thing. All right, so I don't I don't think they will again. I hope. I hope. I hope they don't do it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really hope they don't. I mean, but it does, um, does, I guess. I'm think of TLC. Is there something I want to get you on air saying that I can have it in my archives? Uh -oh. But before we get uh -oh. to that, I say shit. The card. <laughs> So this card, you're probably going to have Sasha and Carmella. Yep. I think you're going to get Bailey and Bianca, Riddle and Lashley, Drew and AJ Styles, which you're about to get to, Fiend and Orton, KO and Roman, Street Profits, Ziggler and Rude, and then uh, New Day and probably the Hurt Business again. Yeah. What a card mm -hmm. for TLC. It's the pay-per-view leading into the it's Rumble, and that's not even done. Mm -hmm. Nope. I think Asuka, because I'm, I regret not asking TJ this, I think this my prediction for this. I told Yvonne this the first week they started doing this Lana and Asuka. Oh, I think it's boy. two on two tables match because table, Lana, oh, table. No. Get it? It all makes sense. Winner take all. Tag titles. We'll, we'll, Asuka, you love teaming up with her so much. Put your belt up. We'll put ours. Winner take all. That keeps the tension between Nia and Shayna because who, who gets the belt? How does that how does that work? Whoever puts Oscar through the table gets the belt. So you can see them fighting each other for the right to slam her to be, win the championship, yeah, yeah, which could lead to Lana and Oscar winning those tag team championships. Oh, God, no. So, like, that could oh, be added Lord, to the card no. as well. I mean, so that's a stacked card. They're heading that direction by teaming those two up. So yeah. I mean, I'm and so the worried. women's tag team needs, and they're not really, the draft's fresh. And what's the criticism we always have? Why is Raw people on SmackDown? Why is SmackDown Raw? So I don't feel like you're going to see. Nia and Shayna on SmackDown interacting yeah. with like the, the Riot Squad right now. They're going to kind of keep that apart and they kind of maybe the Riots appear on Raw to challenge or something down the road. I think we're headed towards that, but that's like seven, eight matches. That's a loaded card that for TLC, loaded. which in the past, <clears throat> let's be honest, it's been kind of, eh. I mean, it, Rumble's next. Let's just get there is how I feel it is. This card feels a little bit different, and this is what I want – Matt Riddle's growing on somebody at this oh, table, God. and it's not me. <laughs> it's not me. Yeah, man, he – I have – all right. You listen to the show. You've heard his takes. Here's his fresh new take. I, I can't watch his matches. I still can't. I can't. This is not what I was going for. Um, But I mean, it's not against him. It's just I hate. I have, like, a fucking phobia against – Feet. I can't even say you don't like, hold on, hold on. So you don't like the fact his feet get pyro? I can't watch it's that. Disgusting. With the sandals? I can't watch I think it. it's great. He flips his shoes off. I mean, good Lord, it's disgusting. You I do can't. not like it? No. I can't watch his legs. Uh -huh. that. You can't eat during that. It makes you sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, gross. But, know, I'm just going to start doing that all the time. But watching his fucking <laughs> high ass backstage, just <laughs> just rambling and talking. Bro nuts. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
not even, it's hard not to like it, but he's all stuff. You can't not laugh at that shit. Like, yeah, you just referenced, like, last week you saw an MVP, and then he's like, I'm not your, I'm not your bro. He's like, Paul. <laughs> and then you see MVP just, like, double take. Like, he had to recover for a minute. Calling Styles <laughs> Skipper and stuff like that. And I'm yeah. looking at him like, what the heck? So Red face. Red it's like, <laughs> fire face. Yeah. That's what it he has that like, dumb look on his face, like, you don't uh, care. Um, and then he was talking you know, to Keith Lee on, on Raw, and he's okay. like, I can do my impressions. Can you do a better one? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you can tell he don't think so, for living. So, Bailey, is this a question or a comment? Uh, best way. What's, what's the best, best way, way to get, get both guys over? over? Well, it's kind of how we talked about with Raquel and Rhea yeah. and KO and Roman. That was not the Fiend and Bray Wyatt still. Well, that's the same person, the Fiend and Randy Orton. <laughs> I mean, they're both over. I they don't think they don't over, need absolutely. it. Um, the best way, I mean, I guess Fiend's going to win. He's asking, yeah. what's the best way to end this feud with them both looking strong? I guess is his question. Uh, I don't um, really Fiend go, uh, Edge interferes, Fiend yeah. wins. Yeah, that's the best. Two, Orton gets screwed, builds that storyline. Fiend looks strong, wow, we didn't wins. See that and happen Fiend goes on. Randy Orton gets screwed over. Um, yeah, I think Edge is coming back after Royal Rumble. I do too. Be a two for, I yeah, think TLC, we might get Bray Wyatt. Versus Randy, Randy kicks Bray Wyatt's ass, and then and we get Fiend and Rumble, which Fiend. leads to Fiend out of the Rumble because mm-hmm. Fiend can't be in it if you don't win, right? Because right. you have to protect that character, and I don't want him near the championship. No, the Fiend's character doesn't have to be long. No, it Rumble. doesn't. I agree. Right. So him and Randy Orton fight at the Royal Rumble. Fiend, Orton, Rumble. There you go. Edge comes back, calls Orton the match. Order Fiend both, goes over. Or they're both in the Rumble, and Randy Orton can throw. I think we're. Up. I think we're headed to a triple threat at Mania with Fiend, Orton, and Edge. Because like, Bray Wyatt could lose, like they could be at the yeah. match. And Ray I think Gordon Bray lose. Roll. I think we get Bray at TLC. Bray takes the loss. Fiend, mm-hmm. he has to go get the Fiend right, and then Rumble. We get the Fiend Orton. Then Edge comes sure. back. Fiend goes after Edge as well, which is a rumor already. They're already talking Bliss and Ed, or Bliss and um, Fiend versus Beth and Edge, right? Oh, That's Beth a Phoenix. That could be yeah, awesome. that But then what's Orton doing? You know what I mean? So because right. you know the whole thing's been built toward Edge. Edge Orton three. He had Mania where they split, <laughs> right? Just wrestling they split one I one. I still can't get over that. So, uh, <laughs> and, they, and then did, and Randy kicked him in the head, taking him out. So yeah, Edge supposed to get his, his revenge from that. Absolutely. We, Von, who do you have winning this feud between Orton and the Fiend? Yeah. I got the Fiend. I hate to say that. I'm sorry to Randy Orton, but so much audio oh, I have to clip from this episode. God, it, it's tough. You're, you're going against Randy Orton. I'm telling him. I see, like, him right now. There we go. So much. Real Randy Orton fan. I don't right. know. Randy I mean, Orton, Yvonne Jitterns. Get off Twitter. <laughs> Not while we're on air. Hey, I'm, a fa- I'm doing well on Twitter with wrestlers. All right. So, Drew McIntyre. So, oh, I texted boy. Chuck Another name. Oh. that after Raw, and I was like, you're really going to like Raw this week because AJ Styles is the number one contender. It was a fantastic triple threat match, by the way. Match. Riddle, Keith Lee, AJ, great match. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drew... What can you really say about Drew? He's on fire right he's a, now. Dude's a beast. I and, mean, um, it's crazy how in 2004 he was he looked like a joke to me, and then now for the all of 2020, all of 2020, I keep saying how phenomenal he is. Mm-hmm. Yep. But this doesn't end, and like he's still running strong. Like at this point, a lot of fans, including myself, at one point probably could have been burned out on him. But yeah, absolutely. But he is just three MB. If you think about it. If when you reflect, I'll ask both of you this question. When you reflect on three MB, don't you kind of look back like those guys are actually pretty entertaining? Yeah. Like I enjoyed them. I mean, they were, were they right. over in the sense yeah, of they were a good company. They're gonna yeah. kick like they're, they're gonna win a championship. You could, you no, you but look take at the people in it. Gender oh, became a champion, right? He was world champion. He beat Randy Orton in a few. Don't look at me when you say that. Yeah, because I don't, don't want to remember that. Don't hinder gender. He's got oh, the lips no. of an angel. See what I, I did there? Gosh, anyway. Gross. Don't rip off It's not Halloween anymore. Gross. <laughs> Two, Drew McIntyre, who's now, like you said, he's the face of Raw. Yeah. It's Drew, how impressed were you at Survivor Series? Because we didn't air last week because of the holidays. How impressed are you with Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns? Yeah, it was a fucking powerhouse. And, and Daniel, you know, I agree with Daniel here. He said he had to go to Impact to get his to get his fucking act together, mm-hmm, and he, he did. Because that's when he, fair. When he came back, he was a beast. And, you know, he's been the top guy since January, basically. And here we are, eleven months later, and I'm not tired of him. So it's the cool. power of Brock Lesnar, dude. You have to give yeah. Brock a little credit I mean, for this. Sure, but at the same time, Lesnar's been gone since March. That's what I'm saying. And he's still keeping the it rumble going. thing got him going. They got him over. Beat him at yeah. Mania in like five minutes, which 
Everybody, I like how WWE makes that like a point. Like he beat Brock. Like Brock's matches normally last about five minutes. Right. But anyway, you can't breathe after that, uh, <laughs> especially when he fights Goldberg. Keep in mind, yeah. Chuck and I are never going to say nothing nice about Brock Lesnar. It's going to be that much. Facts. So don't listen. Don't expect this to be nice. Drew will it's sell hard. you. Hard. He'll credit a lot of his success right now to Brock. Well, that's fine, Man. and that's, I agree with that. He got him over, but since March though, he's been keeping that. Or April, I guess he's been keeping that yes. shit alive. Mm -hmm. Like he's still reinventing. He's not reinventing the character, but he's keeping it entertaining. He's keeping. He's it fresh. developing he's more. Developing. Yeah, he like the, yeah. he added the uh, kill and the sword, which I think is badass because this actually plays into his family heritage and shit, right. which is yeah, really cool. Which we all love. That. Speaking of family heritage, his match at Survivor Series against Roman Reigns. <laughs> was phenomenal. It was. Good. So it was, it was. Just, it was just a, and I like like I'm not. This is why I'm not a huge fan of like the cruiserweight stuff. I like hard hitting fights. Yeah, and, and I was excited. That, that was the definition of one. And they just beat. Them hey, Bakley. Each other. This is how you get over when you have two guys <laughs> that can't afford a loss. I'm not even joking. No. Roman Reigns and Drew were two guys that they couldn't lose. I called this, by the way. I just want to point that out because I pointed out on this show that. They have not mentioned Randy Orton's name one time. No. Roman never even acknowledged Randy. So when Drew took the belt, right. I wasn't really surprised about it. She started tearing up and shit. I was not. <laughs> but like, he went, yes, Survivor yes, Series, you literally have Roman. <laughs> who you can't, if, yep. if, that, if it's inevitable that he's going to fight The Rock, Roman's not losing. No, he's not. I don't think Roman's losing to Mania, even if, I don't care who Roman's fighting. He's not going to lose. I mean, they're saying the backup plan's Biggie. I'm down for that, by the way. Oh, TLC? Playing on T, uh, Sami Zayn versus Big E as well. Yep. I'm down for that yeah, also. That's gonna so Maybe that, that card day. just yeah. gets stacked even more. But if you go into um, – what the fuck was I about to freak out about? <laughs> freak out, John. Drew McIntyre, Roman yeah. Reigns. So this is how you get two people over. Did Drew win? No. no. Did he look amazing? And uh, did you think he was actually going to pick Roman up and break out of that choke at the end? No. Because I did. I did. The believability was yeah. there. And I was like, is this over? Oh, my God. Then he yeah. – when he went down – are we like, oh, my God, wrestling fans that are listening, I know you're listening. Oh, my God, they buried Drew McIntyre because it's the most overused term wrestling fans mm -hmm. use. Yeah. No, no, both guys saying, got man. over. Right. Both guys got over. Mm -hmm. It was a fantastic match, and those are your two top guys. Yeah. Drew McIntyre is the top guy on Monday Night mm -hmm. Raw. Absolutely. Roman Reigns is the top guy on Friday Night SmackDown. That's how it should be, and I think both shows are better for it. Absolutely, they yeah. beat the show out of each other, dude. It was it was a lot of fun, it was a really fun match, and like, I I remember watching that. Like I really thought that McIntyre was going to pick his bitch. Right. Up. <laughs> he did for a minute, then it's yeah. just like, uh, but then like, like, oh no, this is when interference, which one of the things I've had issues with. Do you know nine out of like eighteen matches that not this not this week of wrestling last week ended in interference? This professional wrestling. That's I get that. Up. I get yeah. that. But I like clean finishes. I, I do. do, but this that was a match where Jey Uso's interference worked perfectly because mm -hmm. it's like, well, Drake, it's a story. Yeah, right? Right. professional wrestling is storytelling. So if you can't have clean matches, otherwise you'd have nowhere to go after that. Well, then I just like they back their way into a corner sometimes. Like they'll book two guys against each other, but they both can't afford to lose, so they have somebody beat up both of them. Then right. it's storytelling, man. Like, and, then, yeah. and then SmackDown has something to do with Jey Uso now. It's like well, yeah. you keep everything evolving because if if McIntyre lost. He lost. He's but no he, longer the like. The thing about Slackman is they use all their people correctly. They Daniel do. Bryan put Jey Uso. I mean, that was a huge <laughs> thing for Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn, and Daniel Bryan was absolutely fantastic on Slackman. <laughs> that gets lost because of Dude. all the other good stuff. I love Sami Zayn's. How great is he on the mic? He's phenomenal. He's amazing. How Watch much him. do you hate him when he's talking? Because but I love when he talks. I, I'm like, <laughs> I want to. He's talking, and I'm like, I hate this guy. And by the end of it, I'm like, I wonder if WWE Shop has a sell on his shirt. Well, they still not wearing a shirt. Doesn't he look? <laughs> I think I can like smell his beard from my living room couch. Yeah, like he just looks Listen, so. We're gross. in a pandemic. He ain't got time to shave. <laughs> like, it's just like he, he needs to shave. Sammy Zayn. Um, he looks so gross. It's like, dude, shave at, your beard, brother. Us at the buzz. Uh, we got you. You can you go need, to manscaped.com. Yeah, you, you can get yeah, one of these babies right here. Use promo code RSH twenty twenty. Yeah, and uh, we got you. No conspiracy <laughs> here. We got your back. Well, let me ask you both something. Let's hear it. The tag team match between Miz and Morrison versus McIntyre and Sheamus. How did you guys feel about Drew and Sheamus teaming together? Take it, because you were talking about this a couple weeks so ago. So me and Emmy and Chuck's talked about it. Well, how did yeah. you feel about um, the teaming? So they've obviously been setting this up for a while, whether mm -hmm. it be a tag team or to be enemies. And eventually right. it's going to be enemies. And right. that match is going to be phenomenal because yes. they will beat the shit. I think Rumble. I know, I me, I know Rumble. me and Chuck's yeah. talked about Unfortunately, this. Unfortunately, I hate them. for AJ and Drew to be a one-off, yeah. but it feels like it will be. It will be. It's fine. I think AJ's my pick right now to win the Rumble. My 
mean, AJ, cool. like, I think AJ deserves one more good title run. And they did hit that on, mm-hmm. on Raw. They said how I'm getting the back or whatever. Or who, I forget who he was talking to, but it was it Riddle? Riddle mm-hmm. was like, you, you've had it, but you haven't gotten it back since. <laughs> he's such a, Dude, he's fucking hilarious. He is. Dude, <laughs> he was I told a jerk you in the that he was gonna, way. I, I told you about a year ago, he's, you're going to like him and you're going to hate yourself for it because <laughs> he's, it's hard not to well, like can him. Can he wear tennis shoes, though? I know what the man. thing is. He can't look down at his feet. It's though. real. It's crazy. That's how Riddle is. I know, man. And that's what makes it. Crazy. I just need <laughs> him to wear like those like water socks. Yes. I've been watching. I was eating and watching Monday Night Raw. Of anyway, Riddle comes get back on to Seamus because I like your viewpoint on this because you've called this a couple weeks ago. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as you see him on screen together, that's not an accident. So right. obviously they're doing something. And I think it's going to be friendly first. And they've kind of hinted that. They've kind of. And I think they're. They've hit, they've, they've not even hit. They've directly told you that Miz, yeah. the Miz is trying to interfere with their friendship he already. Is, absolutely. So that's not going to work out. And then uh, eventually they're going to be have a hard hitting feud, yeah. Which I'm excited for I all of it. that to go down, too, yeah. all of it from start to finish. Do you think the Miz is going to successfully cash in? I don't know. I mean, like I want to say no, because imagine him being the Raw champion right now, just wouldn't work with what they're doing. But at the same time, it would. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I feel like if he does. Mania? No, they've already done that. I no, like not, not well, nothing will ever top Seth. So like just because it won't top it, because that was epic and that was complete because Seth lost earlier in the night and we know how that goes, but like yeah. if not at Mania, he's gonna have to wait a little bit. Like mm-hmm. let Drew have mm-hmm. his run through Mania, cash it's had to be some random raw. Money in the bank is in June, right? Mm-hmm. So he has till June to cash in. Does he I was gonna ask you, does it matter that he just won it? Does that extend the year, or does he still have to cash in before Obviously, June? Obviously, I don't know, as I'm not part of it. But I'm assuming you're but right. He would have to before June. Otherwise, we'll have right. two money in the bank. That's which could be a new storyline right. in itself, I guess, if they wanted to to do something different. That's why I'm thinking Mania. Um, could be Mania. Could be the role after Mania. I keep envisioning Drew losing the belt, beating the Miz's ass. Grabbing the briefcase, going and cashing it in, even though he, it isn't his, yeah. and winning his belt back. <laughs> just takes it. Yeah. And there's a storyline, like, what the hell just happened here? Or, and then Drew just comes a bigger ass-kicking machine. I thought that was going to happen if, or, uh, if he didn't yeah. beat Orton. I thought that's what was going to happen. I thought he was going to go steal the briefcase, cash it in when Orton was down in a match, and win. Drag a ref. Which ref's going to tell Drew McIntyre no? Hey, look at him. <laughs> Don't Drags look him out there. Count. I guess, um, claim more in your face off. I guess they could do something along the lines of like a match, like belt versus briefcase. Yeah, <laughs> so I could see Sheamus doing that with the briefcase, just take it and cash it in. And so my two cents on the Sheamus thing is, I think they fight at Rumble. I think you're right. They're slow. They're doing this for a reason. So they're slowly, slowly, slowly building this, which is perfect because we like it here at RSH. We like yeah, storytelling and long storylines. You the, guys on the, the internet sense. want long storylines. Well, let's not get carried away. I hate storylines that are drawn out when it involves weddings and cheating spouses. Oh, it's <laughs> fucking ridiculous. I'm ready for the Buddy Murphy of Leah wedding. <laughs> so don't even enough. start. But when it comes to real athletes doing real athlete things, yes. I love This kind that. of storyline. Yeah. yeah, so Seamus has been overdue as well. He's another guy that's been overlooked. I don't would you hate if Sheamus won the Royal Rumble and fought Drew at WrestleMania? No, 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 no. I, was, I was actually that would make it. more sense. And here's the deal with Sheamus. That dude, I remember when he debuted back in like what 2010 or so. He beat John Cena in the table match. Say I that. who I, did he beat? <laughs> and his first real match. I, mean, I didn't see him. I don't know. But uh, right, there we go. <laughs> that was a good one. Which one? <laughs> but so I never really got behind Sheamus until about a year ago. Well, I guess probably this, when he was with Cesaro. The so bar. A few years. Yeah, ago. The bar was we fantastic. Bar. And now I love Sheamus. I'm not sure what. It's different, but I love watching Sheamus beat people's asses now. Like he's really grown on me yeah. over the past year and a half. So I would love to see him in the title picture again, and you know, to fight McIntyre for that would be an awesome. I thank view. you. I'd love to see. I don't like the fact that Styles and McIntyre could be a one-off. I really don't. I, really I feel like I feel like that's. I feel like, it, that's, hmm. I feel like that story could have more life. Yeah. All right, how about they feud at TLC? They go to Rumble, still feuding. Some kind of wonky finish. The big dude gets involved and AJ gets disqualified. Something stupid that we'll bitch about the next week, but whatever. But in the long term, you get that again at Rumble. Then Sheamus wins. Then then Drew's like, are you going to cash in on me? I'm your buddy. Are you going to go cash in on Roman? And Sheamus plays that out for a while. And all of a sudden, bro kick to Drew. I'm yeah. cashing on you, mm. fella. WrestleMania. Yeah. Boom. Would have to be Drew there. wins at a chamber or whatever, right? Keeps yeah. his belt. Mm-hmm. Sheamus bro kicks him. Yeah, this is my buddy. Boom. Got it. Thumbs Story's down. been nope. told since November. Yeah. I've been Long-term storytelling at its best. There's your match. So you have Rock, Roman, 
Shame some enter some sort of Bray, Alexa, Edge, Beth, Orton kind of thing between them. Yeah, something. <clears throat> you think Big E, Sami Zayn, Daniel Bryan, some interaction there. The hurt bit. I mean, maybe it could be super stacked. Yeah. Then you got dude, the Wesley. I think you're gonna get Bianca and Sasha. What number is this? What mania is this? I don't um, remember anymore. But it does have the potential to be like one of the better ones from the last. I agree. Yeah. Since <clears throat> WrestleMania 30, I would say. Let's see. WrestleMania 36. Wow. Sit, hold on. You don't even know who you're at RSH. Wait up. 37. So you're WrestleMania 37. 37. So this has the potential to be the best WrestleMania since WrestleMania 30. So within the last seven years, it probably won't top 30. 30 was amazing. 30, 30 was great. It's going to be the best for a long time, probably. 36 but, was good, especially in this craziness we're in. Different. Oh, is it going to be two nights again this year? I know? hope so. Dude, I hope that's something that caught on. <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoyed it, dude. I, I enjoyed really it. enjoyed it. Because that gives me the chance to actually go to somebody's house and watch Saturday because normally it's on Sunday and I right. just have to go to work. Well, the thing is because, you know, when it was on Sundays only, it's on till fucking midnight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, it's from 5 to yeah, midnight. Man. This one, it's like 8 to 11 or 7 to 11, which is still, I mean, well, but it's like three hours. Long. I can do 11. Midnight is one. Of, I get up at 5 a.m. I, I would yeah, rather watch right. two 7 to 11s and one 5 to 12. I agree with that. Because seven hours. And it spreads it out. You can have different matches on each night, like the Firefly Funhouse and the Boneyard was separate. That was great. If they did all that in one night, that's too much for me. And let's be honest. I drink beer the entire time, so I'm just <laughs> hammered at midnight. <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> it's a good thing you don't have to leave. One, because drinking drive is bad. And two, because we have a 10 o'clock curfew. That's the uh, truth. Do you guys, if there is a, okay, McIntyre and Styles at TLC, do you see Miz getting involved making the finish bad? Or try no. to? No, and I think Miz is going to lay low. I think you're eventually uh, going to get a Miz and Morrison feud out of this, too. I'm still having Morrison feud. We've been, feud we've been calling this for months. Since the beginning. Kind of but like the Otis and they gotta get, thing. they got to get the Miz involved in something else. Yeah. I don't think he's going to have him follow Drew around for the next six months, either. So like, I want Drew to do his own shit. Not Drew, I'm sorry. I, I want, want him and I want Morrison. New Day. I do, too. Yeah. I want New Day versus Miz and Morrison versus Hurt Business in a triple threat tag yeah, team. Yeah, would be fun. I want Miz and Morrison to team up a few more times before they inevitably break up. I see Morrison either stealing. Yes, yeah, so we've been calling it for about eight months. We have, but it never happened. I see Morrison stealing Miz's briefcase and maybe cashing in, or he smacks Miz just like <laughs> Otis and Tucker did. Our boy Cy. Okay, here we go. From the SJP Wrestling Podcast. Yep. Yeah, check him out. Uh, he asked me to be on to do the year-end review of NXT, so I'm very excited there about you that. Go. I'll be on the year-end review of uh, the main roster. He said uh, when he thinks NXT, he thinks of me, so I was very flattered because oh, nobody thinks of me. So <laughs> I was very cool. He's Sai's good thing. dude. Uh, go he's follow his man. podcast. Follow him on Twitter. Great articles. Good dude. And uh, he's going to be ju- helping us with the buzz once oh. we get up and going as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, up, very man? excited for Sai. But this dude lives over – sorry, you're okay, you're fine. But this dude lives over in the UK, so WrestleMania <laughs> is on at 5 a.m. here, yes. man. Like, wow. <laughs> he has to book time off and book his kids. <laughs> like, he has to book a place for his kids for WrestleMania. And he's the one that started the hashtag team. He's like, like, honey, I need, that, three so. te- I need three days off of work. Why? WrestleMania. <laughs> WrestleMania weekend. And I need you to make sure the kids are uh, babysat for. And uh, <laughs> Dude, could you imagine watching... Watching WrestleMania live at 5 a.m. Wow. I mean, I can drink a lot of beer, but even that's pushing it. That would be one of those nap all day, <laughs> right. wake up. At, it's like, yeah. why am I drinking exactly. beer at 4 a.m.? Right. That's wild, dude. dude. It's been a, it was a good week of wrestling, dude. I'm, really, I'm really excited that you watched NXT. Yeah, I'm glad you did too. Uh, no, thank it's you. my favorite show of the week. Yeah, I and like, really I, I understand your criticism at first, and I've been saying like it ain't in that way, and I'm glad you kind of well, got to see it's even, not exactly. Yeah. Even last night, like I watched all the matches, they weren't. That that spot, for me. Yeah. spot, they were kick out of finisher spot. It wasn't, yeah. like, it wasn't like watching Nancy with the stars. So, like, like let me ask you this: After watching the go home show for the people, you're excited. Are you more interested in war games this week than you were before? You I watched plan NXT? on watching war games. Okay, like, I Did wasn't. That? I wasn't planning on watching it until I watched it this week. Did those two matches. So you know damn well one's going to open and one's mm-hmm. going to close. Absolutely. I'm hoping to God that the men open. I probably won't yeah. watch it live unless she wants to do her own thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where my wife is right now, over there. Uh, <laughs> Remember the nonsense. But tomorrow I, at 7 o'clock. That's right, 7 p.m. Yeah, Eastern absolutely. Standard Time. But uh, I will definitely watch it on Sunday, then I'll watch it live on Saturday. Is it It's on Sunday. Oh, fuck. Well, I probably won't watch it live. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But I'll watch it on Monday. Uh, no, watch it. I have, it, what, what time is it on? 7 to 10. Okay. I don't pay review time. 7 ghost, 11, but whatever. I have a ghost interview at 2 on Sunday, so that could work. Maybe I will watch it live. Yeah, it comes on at 7, pre-show for a half hour, and then I think it does a match, and then goes in. I think they'll throw something on the pre-show. I won't watch mm-hmm. the pre-show anyway. I'm not a pre-show guy, but 
I'm, I'm definitely not. I'm, I'm definitely watching it before next Thursday at 6 p.m. <laughs> that's fair. Diary, that's fair. Yep. Well, as before we wrap this up, as you, we said, we are with the buzz. Yep. Um, go ahead and sigh real quick. I used to stay. I used to stay up when I was younger. Now I'm a little older. I need a little tactical nap. Yeah, that's fair. I need a <laughs> yeah. nap as well. Good at 8 p.m. We go to midnight. I'm famous for making fun of people that take naps, but Dude, sometimes, like naps. you, you know, when I had COVID, I started. To, I had. To, I was tired all the time, so I was mm -hmm. taking a lot of naps. And I was like, you know what? These are these are if utilized you correctly, to. these are good. Yeah, man. Naps. Danae's a big napper. I've I've taken a couple, and it's every energizes you for sure. It's just, I hate doing it on like during the work. I guess I'm getting old. Yeah, because I don't want to go to bed later. Right. Oh, I'm, it's like two o'clock in the morning, and I'm in the buzz chat room talking to Archie because Archie don't sleep because he's insane. Oh, well, thank you. Canadian. Speaking of, Timmy Vaughn, he's the one that started it. Thank you, Sai. Yeah, so yeah. Thanks. Got to hear that shit. Hashtag Timmy Vaughn. Sai, when that's on a T-shirt, we'll send you one. It'll take about nine years to get there because we're in a pandemic, but okay. we'll get you. That'll covered. be on a T-shirt event, and you won't be compensated. But but, uh, coming soon. <laughs> not, not, yeah. yep. <laughs> so soon. before we wrap up, we are now part of the buzz. Yep. Check us out. We're on all different social media platforms. So go to, I have it somewhere. Uh oh, because we're professional podcasters on this show. There it is. Boom. Bottom line. Follow us at WTB.com in which you can also follow us at all of these different platforms. Archie did it again. That's like both songs. Did it again. So like, yeah. I kind of want to play the podcast show song again, but that's kind of <laughs> redundant. So I'll probably play it when we go off the air. There you go. But like, great. Got to be a part of the buzz. Got to yeah. be a part of a, mm -hmm. you know, place where freedom's a good thing. Absolutely. Freedom's never free. No, no, it is so far. No, nothing's free. <laughs> yeah. But all right, guys, thank you so much for checking out Regularly Scheduled Hostilities. Huge thanks to TJ Wilson. Absolutely. Wilson, Jesus. Let's try it again. Big thanks <laughs> to TJ Wilson, a.k.a. <laughs> Tyson Kidd. <laughs> it was great me. meeting him in person and not in the comments, but it was awesome. Absolutely. Huge yeah. thanks to you, man. Yeah. Uh, be sure to watch all of his work. and. Mm -hmm. I Let's hope Retribution didn't get him out where he was. I, I know. know. He out was in the hiding. dark, yeah. He's hiding, man. He's I was hiding. going to ask him his Retribution out there, but I didn't want to get any heat with Mace. No, well, he'll get you. He he's, doesn't respond to me on Twitter anymore either. Well, he's our, he's, he's back there lurking. You know, he's doing And to thing. TJ again for the birthday video he sent me this past week. My birthday was last Saturday. Thank you again. That made my day. I appreciate it. Was awesome. She he's cried. Awesome. I, I'm still oh my godding about it. So. <laughs> and thank <laughs> you awesome. to all of you listeners, watchers, commenters. Shares whatever you do, we support you and we appreciate all of your support to us. Find us. Our Twitter handle is our name at the bottom left corner. Find us there. Find us on Facebook as well. Regularly scheduled hostilities. Give our page a like. Go to the buzz, of course. Give their page a like. Tomorrow, yeah, like. programming note marital nonsense, seven o'clock. So we have Eastern Standard Time, and we're going to talk about uh, the, the Baptist. Uh, Church guys who came knocking on my door at 5 p.m. this afternoon because oh. it was creepy and they said inappropriate things. We're going to hear all about oh, it tomorrow. I can't wait to that. Absolutely. I'm ready for that. All right. And I then between that. the pipes with Archie, um, he has a special guest on tomorrow. Give me one second and I will actually tell you who that is. But uh, between the pipes is back. Same shows, different network. Um, well, it's all the same stuff. It's gonna all be the same shows. But these shows are phenomenal. Yes. And uh, between the pipes tomorrow, Greg Ryder will be on. He'll be performing a special song dedicated to the Humboldt Broncos and all oh, those in past yeah. impacted by the tragic crash. Oh, wow. He's Canadian born country singer, so that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that could be cool. I will definitely check that out. Of yeah. course, after middle nonsense ends. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, yeah, man, Danae nice. would not be happy if you're sitting over there watching between the pipes as you're <laughs> doing your show. Absolutely. She Shut did. up, honey. I'm listening to Archie. As much as she <laughs> likes Archie, I don't think she'd be cool with that. That's no. fair. All right, guys, we appreciate all of you, and be sure to keep watching us right here every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And at the end of the day, you will need to fear regularly scheduled hostilities.